everyone, welcome back. This is Lisa Lawrence with Rose Balling by Art of Lisa. And today I'm doing part three of a three part series of my sketches, bringing it to life onto a frame and then doing the detailing. All right, so let's get to it. Let me lower you guys down here. Okay, so here's the frame that I started with a sketch that I did prior. Here's our sketch. Here's what we brought it into. And today we're going to detail it and kind of bring it to life. Okay, so most of the time I use Joe Sonia paints. So Joe Sonia warm white is normally what I use to do my detailing, but my warm white is kind of dead and I forgot to do some orders this week. So instead, I'm going to use my Delta Ceram Coat Light Ivory. All right, let me move this out of the way for a second. Let me bring my palette over. Again, now I'm using a wet palette because I paint in acrylics. So this wet palette, just to show you, well, let me use my palette knife here. Underneath has a wet sponge. Okay, and then it has special paper. Now, you can use all different other things to do a wet palette, so you don't have to go out and buy this, and I'll save that for another video. Um, I have lots of videos in store and my brain is ready to explode. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use this light ivory. So I already have a little bit here. I'm going to add a little bit more here. Now when you do detail paint, painting overlay or overlaying or outlining, your paint wants to be pretty loose. Kind of like, um, when you would take ice cream and you would, remember you would stir it when you were a kid and make it into like really soft and soupy? Yeah, that's the same idea. So I do a medium here that I mix in this little container and I do one third Joe Sonia, Joe Sonia glaze. Sorry, my New Yorker was coming out. Every so often I talk like this. It's a wonderful thing. I do one third flow medium so that's one third glaze, one third flow, and then one third retarder. So one third glaze, one third flow, one third retarder. And I mix that in this little container here. I add a little bit to my paint and I'm going to just use my palette knife and mix that up. And if you notice, doesn't that look like the consistency of when you would take ice cream and mix that together and make it really soft and soupy? Well, that's the idea. All right, let me get a piece of paper towel here. I want to wipe off my palette knife. Here we go. I'm going to take, going to take my palette knife. Let me get these out of the way. All right, you can hear this off in the background here. Let's move this off to the side. Put my paint here. Now I am using today a 10-0 liner, original gold, King Art, and it's a 9375. I'll try to remember to put that in the comments. But I also enjoy my Joe Sonia liner. That's the same one, but they don't make, not Joe Sonia, Jackie Shaw liner. They don't make it anymore. So this is my replacement here. So, if you remember, this is what I was working on in the last video. I'm going to take my brush, here it is, and I still have my same colors that I had last week. If you notice, I have a few extra colors because I've been working on some other stuff. And the nice thing about a wet palette is you can add paint to it and you can keep it going for quite a while because remember, you have a lid that you put on top of it. I also take a spray bottle with water and I'll spray it just to make sure that it stays fresh and wet. All right, let's get going. So what I did, let me bring that back over here again, is I have my brush and I'm going to simply twirl my fingers through. By twirling it through, I keep that nice point. All right. A lot of times though what I'll do is I'll tap just a little bit on my paper towel so that way if there's a little bit extra I can take it off. Here let me just make sure you, you guys have a good view. 
thank you for your patience. I hope, ooh, brush is flipping out of my hands. Now, because this is dry and it's acrylic, and I should go back, a lot of times rose modeling is done with oils, but because it's acrylic and this is already dry, I can tip my brush into that original color. So let's say that blue there. This way I get a nice blending as I start to do my detailing. So detailing doesn't necessarily mean that I'm outlining around every single thing. I wonder, could I make that? Oh, don't mind my fingers there. All right, doesn't necessarily mean that I'm outlining around everything there. Now I like to add little dots. They just look kind of cool there. We have our green here. Now I tipped a little bit into my yellow so I get a little yellow and ivory mixed together. So yeah, so this warm white, the version I'm using is light ivory with Delta Ceram coat. You know, sometimes you just have to be innovative with what you have. All right, so as I said, I have other videos coming down the pike, and the next one I have, I actually mentioned in my last video, I'm going to do a video where I'm going to show prep work, how you set this all up. Um, I kind of went back and forth all week whether or not I was going to do that one or if I was going to finish this, and I said, you know, let me get this one done. I didn't want it sitting waiting. And it's kind of nice to see part three. So just like when I did all my stroke work before, rose balling continues that contrast of light and dark and thin and thin, thin and thick. And that's what I'm going to do with my detailing. Isn't that pretty, that nice little cross hatching that I got there? I really like that. Playing with your liner brush is very important. If you take that paint in black or white, probably if you're going to practice, I would take black. And if you mix some medium to it, whether you have the medium that I have or if you just add some water to it, and just take it on a paper and just kind of play. For example, I have pieces of painted cardboard. This is a, well, I think this was a Cheerio box. And I'll paint it with different colors. And I can use this to just kind of practice. So I take my brush, and if you notice, I use my wrist as a brace so I can be on top of it. And I'm just going to take that brush and like an airplane, push it down and pull it up. Push it down and pull it up. And let my brush just play. It's kind of like when you would sit on the phone and with a pen and paper and you would just kind of doodle. Well, this is the same idea with your brush. In order to learn what your brush can do for you, you need to play with it. You need to work with it. You can do these little teardrops, ready? Nice little teardrop, I take it, I push it down and pull it back up. Push it down and pull it back up. And notice I'm not rushing. If I rush, I get these little flippies. We don't want flippies. Unless you intentionally do one like this where I push it down come back and then I pull a nice little thing up down make my brush stop and pull it up so you can just kind of play well let's bring our frame back here and continue the playing on that I think it's kind of nice when you can see where a piece kind of finishes and bring it to completion so this I have a little more yellow and I had added a little of that medium to my yellow before, so I get a flow. The reason you would like to have your overlay, your detail color, a little wetter 
is because you want it to flow nicely under the paint that is already there. Now again, as I mentioned before, acrylic paint dries very quickly, so this is already way dry. But in oils, you would typically do a wet on wet technique and the overlay paint, the detail paint, would need to be wetter and looser than the paint other underneath. If it wasn't wetter, it would end up pulling that paint off, and that is not something you want to do. Now with acrylic, oops, my paper towel is having a mind of its own here. Let's rearrange that. Take a little sip of water. Make sure you hydrate. It's something I tell my kids all the time, especially my son who is 12 and uh, is a soccer player. And I swear, sometimes he just does not drink enough water. I'm like, drink your water. Okay, anyway, sorry, the mom and me came out. So anyway, we're going to keep pulling this around. Let's see how much we can get done today. Here we go. Let's come off this stroke. And remember, as I've mentioned in past videos, everything is based on S strokes and C strokes. Isn't that kind of nice? Oh, that was pretty. There. Let's give it a little drop of stuff to solidify it. Rose Molly is based on flowers, but they're fantasy flowers. So your mind's imagination can just kind of run free. This style is the Telemark style, which is an asymmetrical, free-flowing style based in the Telemark region of Norway. Norway is a very interesting country when it comes to the rose modeling folk art because only 3% of the land in Norway was tillable, it is tillable. So you have a very mountainous region with lots of valleys. So those valleys back in the day, you would have different dialects, different native costume, different customs, different artistic values. So when the Rococo, the campus carving, when all of that kind of came into Norway in the 1600s, you know, the Hanseatic League, oh, so many different things. It's such an interesting time period. This art form of the S strokes, the C strokes, which you see in so many different art styles and different nationalities, came into Norway. And because Norway had such a rich heritage, already going back to the Viking days, this went into the different valleys and it just took off into so many different directions. So there's actually at least 15 different styles. And there's a bunch of little offshoot styles also. So. Telemark just happens to be one of my favorite styles to do. We're just going to keep working our way around here. It's just very free-flowing. We're just going to keep moving around here. Let's see how far we can get today. All right. Now we need to have a stem over here. Add a little detail on the outside there. Sorry, you hear my brush is taking off on the outside there. All right. And I'm just going to work my way around all the different flowers. I'm not worried about detailing every little piece of it. It's kind of nice to leave some of the details without an outline on it. Now just like in nature you would see these little tendrils come off when you're looking at wildflowers so it's kind of nice to have this little extra come out of it. Let's come back down here. We'll bring this around. Alright. I enjoy doing telemark for um, just the freedom with it and 
a lot of times with my rose smiling, I tend to go a little overboard. With telemark, I can kind of do that. Other style 